there are the three cornerstones to our celebration of the season of Lent. And I've suggested to you that maybe in our prayer we can accord ourselves a much greater sense of freedom in the way that we speak to God and that we're in the presence of God in prayer. But then we turn to fasting. And that's something which takes us in a very different direction, doesn't it? It asks us to consider all that we have, to be a little bit more disciplined about noticing what we consume and how much we have maybe we don't use. We have so much stuff. It's quite exciting, really, when we move house, to go through everything that we've got and to move it from one place to another. In my experience, I've very often left a lot of things behind because I simply don't need them. And I've found a great deal of freedom in that. In all the world religions, there's that sense of fasting, which is a preparation for prayer, a sense of self-discipline that places us in the presence of the divine. But I think it is also a very good time for us to take stock of what we have, what we need, what we don't need, and maybe to share what we don't need with others. But I'd like to give you an extract from the prophecy of Isaiah that talks about fasting in a rather different way. Is not this the sort of fast that pleases me? It is the Lord who speaks to break unjust fetters and undo the thongs of the yoke, to let the oppressed go free and break every yoke to share your bread with the hungry and shelter the homeless poor, to clothe the man you see to be naked and not turn from your own kin. Then will your light shine like the dawn and your wound be quickly healed over. So whether we see fasting in that traditional sense of self-discipline and giving up something, or, or whether we see it more in the terms of Isaiah and that sense of justice for those around us, I hope that fasting can mean something for us in this season of Lent and that we can look towards Easter in a way in which we will be better people living gospel values in our lives. Mm -hmm.